a circular stone window opening. Hi there, I am Thack from Thack Ironworks, and I know what you're thinking. Stonework? Thack? Thack, you are a professional blacksmith, armor, or sculptor. You are not a professional stonemason, and that is correct. I am not a professional stonemason, but I do think of myself as an amateur stonemason, and here I am at my uh, personal project here that I've been working on for about a year of a hobbit hole. Now I also hear what you're thinking, a hobbit hole, wait a minute, there is a lot to talk about here, but we're not going to talk about uh, all of that stuff. Today we're going to narrow our focus down to this window opening here. Um, I want to do a stone um, perimeter for this window um, to create um, just the opening for that this particular window. It's uh, in the entirety of the rest of the stonework here. I've done a few stone arches and circles. So here is uh, an opening that I made. This is the wood storage area for this particular project. Um, and when I did this circle, I was kind of going fast and loose freestyling and I thought, well, I've already done my brick circle and I was using that as my guide. So I was not overly precise and I'm not happy with how this turned out. This is certainly not a perfect circle. It's got a real kind of oval shape to it and I had to do a lot of correcting as I went there. I didn't use a form um, to to check my progress as I was going and I think that was a bit of a mistake. I'm not uh, too upset with the effect of this. I think it looks fine. I'm going for a very rustic look anyway and, and it doesn't offend me but I want to try to do something a little more precise as I move over to this window here. So for the actual door opening of the Hobbit hole here, I've got a steel jam, if you will, this giant ring, this uh, whole assembly that I made and put in before I did the stonework. So I do have a perfect circle for that. This, by the way, is just a piece of plywood. This is a construction door. This is not the finished door. That you will see in a subsequent video if you tune in. There's good reason to subscribe. I know I'm not covering a lot on here, but there's a lot um, coming up with this project here. Um, and I would suggest if you're not already a subscriber that you should subscribe to the video. But anyway, um, so I've got this perfect circle here, which is really hard geometry. And that's, that was kind of a juxtaposition that I wanted to have um, with having very rough organic stonework um, and then the hard geometry of the door. When I look at this window being so close to it, I felt that it needed to be also a pretty precise looking circle um, to stand beside this uh, the doorway. So that's why I want to do this one as precise as I can, but still trying to keep that very rustic stonework. Um, enough chit chat, let's get right into it. I'll show you what the process is. Okay, so. Forgive me, there's a little bit of preamble here before I can actually get down to the actual stonework, but it is coming, I promise you. Um, the interior wall is a brick wall, and then the exterior wall is a stone wall. When I did the brick one, I didn't have the angle correct um, compared to the stone one. So there's quite a difference here uh, from side to side, an actual five inch difference. So where it's not very deep in here, where it's quite deep here. So my circle out here, I'm gonna to try to keep the circle true to the, this wall is going to be bent. So actually the window tube, if you will, will have a slight bend in it, which I'm fine with. I think that's kind of part of the quirkiness of the whole project. Just makes for a little bit of um, more complication as far as getting these stones cut for the perimeter and getting them all fit in because there's gonna be a variety of different lengths. I have started and I've already set my bottom stone. I, the top stone is called the keystone. I have no idea what this one would be called. We'll call it the bottom keystone for just something. Uh, so it is coming out and I've got it squared off in relation to the front wall there. So we're now ready to start coming up the sides. For the first half or the bottom half, I've got this little device here, which when I get set to the proper level, gives me my inside diameter. So as long as I can keep my stones um, at that, then I should have a true circle. Once I get up halfway, then I put in my wooden form. Well, you'll see. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I've got this hanging. This is now the center. I've determined that. Uh, 
So we've got, I've got it leveled and balanced and everything like that. When I pull this thing on and off, I always have to come back to my center line here. So I've gone ahead and cut this stone. Uh, combination of chipping with a hammer and cutting with my angle grinder, which we'll, you'll see momentarily, to get this one fitted in place. And you can see there's a dry fit for it that's going in there quite nicely. Let's start with the other bottom one. I will try this one here, so I'm going to have to now cut this one to length. Um, you might notice I've got all my soldiers um, just stacked up here on the seating area. Um, so I've got, I'm combining dark with light. I get, I'm not going to say black and white because they're, they're basically shades of gray and there's quite a bit of uh, difference in tone there. But I've got 12 dark ones and I've got 12 light ones and that should be a sufficient amount to get me around the circle. So I've got all my soldiers they're ready and waiting and now I just have to cut them down to size and do the fine fitting as we get into this. Most of my starting work I like to do all the shaping with the hammer itself just chipping it off but I find with these longer pieces, there's a lot of them that have uh, internal fractures in them and stuff like that. They tend to break not where I want them to break, so it's a little safer to go in with the seven inch angle grinder and the diamond cutting wheel. It's just a nicer way to get a um, safe cut that's going where you want it to be. It's just that it's noisy and dusty. It kind of bugs the neighbors, or I, I, I feel it does anyway. So I don't like using this, but it does, uh, for something like this where you're that specific and that tight fitting, it's the tool to use. So well, let's do that now. Okay, so I've got my two um, flanking guys uh, dry fitted here. I think right now I'm gonna mix up a batch of mortar and then I will have to start cutting the other ones as I've got the mortar going there. Makes it for a much more exciting time because time is of the essence. So let's get to mixing up the mortar. Six shovelfuls of masonry sand followed by two shovelfuls of white masonry cement mix, and also a fistful of just regular Portland cement, just to dirty it up a bit. I like the white mortar. It has a more traditional look to it, um, but I like to throw a little bit of Portland in there just to dirty it up so it's not so pristinely white that I find a little bit disconcerting. So now I've got all my dry ingredients there. I'm just going to mix that up. It was a good core workout. Okay, once the dry is consistently mixed now, I can get the water. introduce some water and then get that mixed up and then I will just slowly add more water as I approach my desired consistency. You don't want to add too much water at once and end up with a very soupy mixture. You can always add a little bit more to get you where you need to be. And we're good to go. All right, I put down plenty of mortar here. Now I'm going to put a couple of stone flakes in here. I knew I had to shim this stone up. Before I put that on, I want to back butter. 
the inside edge and now drop it into place. Okay, now I get my contraption set up here. little bit high. Good? Okay. So far, so good. Home stretch. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do, now that we've got those two, we just repeat another 10 or 12 times till we get around here. All right, so I don't know, two hours in, something like that, and I've come up. I've basically reached pretty much the halfway point. Uh, so, and you, as you can see, I pulled out my little uh, contraption there. That no longer functional. I had to pull away my blocks there. So now I've resorted to this piece here, which is my 24 inch circle, just a little plywood mock up here. Um, I've done a cut, little cutaway for the keystone there. So, uh, now that I've got that in place, I'm just going to do a little pointing on this stuff. Once I've got the form in as we continue on now, it's going to have to stay in place for the entire thing and things get a little bit messy on the inside here. There was, there's a lot of cleanup on this type of thing and uh, I'm not certainly not a professional mason and I'm a little bit sloppy, on, but that's what muriatic acid is for. So I'll be doing my cleanup with that. So things are going well, um, but it's always a little nerve wracking as you start coming around and try to make everything fit in there. And then when you pull it away to see that it's actually going to stay in position, that's always uh, fairly exciting, dangerous. So let's continue on. I find um, to try to get the orientation of the stone is relatively tricky to do. Um, like you think you've got it and then when you actually look how it's mating from one side to the other, you often have to tilt it more than you would think. And one thing that I find helps me, you just hold on a second. All right, I just check my level on my line here to make sure this is set because it's not going to move now until after the process. So this line is my level line here. I've got a cutout for the keystone. I've got my center line here, which happened to be right where my little grabber hole is, but luckily enough, I still got enough I can put a pivot point on there. Now, if I grab a piece of string, just a random piece of twine, so I can then use that to come out, and when I bring it across here, I can use it as a guide of my radiating line so that I kind of get the stones coming out at a proper angle. I did that actually for my door um, as well, and that seemed to work out quite well. So now looking at this coming across here, I can see that I've got this one centered, so I'm feeling good about myself, and I'll be able to use this up and around here. So continuing on, I've got my Hilti here. I'm just um, periodically putting a hole into the brick and then just putting this a quarter inch, uh, piece of quarter inch round bar in, and then just, uh, mortaring that in between some of the stones 
just to tie the two faces together there uh, because I'm going to pull this out and before I put all the stonework in around it this thing is going to be self-supporting for a little bit so um, I want to tie to the wall so it's got a little bit more grab so I just put a hole in a couple inches Once I've got it in the hole then, I actually bend it to the side and then rotate it in the hole so that it lays down. So bend, rotate until it mates in there. Okay, so I'm always hoping when I start out that um, the general size of stones I use are going to magically work, that everything will come to the keystone exactly where I want. That did not happen. So I had to go for thinner ones here um, of my last light stones in order to get a sufficient space for a dark keystone. So anyway, also I'm this last stone here is kind of kicking out this way. It's no longer going square in that way. It's coming over um, and that could have been happening all along there. And now suddenly I've got, it's quite tight at the inner part there and very open here. So what I'm thinking of doing is just putting this stone in here um, to disguise the fact that uh, what's going on there and that should even out my um, trough there for the keystone. Keystone by the way is going to be quite thin it'll just be like a face stone and then there'll be other keystones in the back there. Because that's the upper part there that's going to be the ugliest part of this circle down here. I tried to do nice chisel stonework that all fits in there fairly tightly and everything. Up here, no one really looks up there. That's where I hide all my sins and uh, correct all my errors as it were. So, um, so now I've got thinner stones here in order to create, to get into the keystone there. So i uh, make it a feature, it, it'll work, it's fine. It's all good. So this is it, we're in the fine strokes here. Let's just see how this all plays out. All right, the final moment, I'm putting a keystone in here, and uh, yeah, this is where it all comes together, kitties. Things are not going well, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna put a little more water into my mortar and see if I can get it a little stickier. Bad. Not good. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now what I have to do, I've got a, an opening back there. I need to get some more keystone pieces to help support everything. Uh, you won't be able to see that. I think we'll shut off the camera for the moment. I'm gonna do that and you should be able to pull the form out immediately after finishing an arc, an arch, and it should be able to be self-supporting. I'm going to take a lunch and then come back and see if I've got the cojones to do that. So let's, let me just finish off here. We'll be back in a moment and let's see what happens. All right, I've just had a nice, nutritious three martini lunch to work up my courage for this. I'm kidding, I did. I don't drink. Thaxter, don't drink. Remember, kitties, my little Thaxters, don't drink. Anyway, I am feeling a little bit skittish. I've drink, drank a lot of coffee here. Um, so now, moment of truth, we're gonna pull this out. The mortar is still wet. Uh, what I've done is pile up a whole pile of cinder blocks here on this side to provide some lateral support 
as this is going to want to push out sideways um, as we pull this here. Um, looking at my keystone there, I was, I think, maybe rushing a little bit, and the keystone is off center by about three quarter of an inch. Also, a little bit wonky and not as high as a keystone could be. I maybe was rushing it a little bit. If I find you know, over the next couple days, I'm really truly unhappy with this. Once this actually sets up, I will be able to cut this guy away. I could recut another keystone and position it in there. So I'm just going to live with it a little bit and see how bad it is. It really comes down to this what is wider here than this one here and kind of shifted the whole thing over. So uh, it might be okay. I might be making mountains out of molehills here. So moment of truth, enough talk. We have a window opening. So a lot of clean up here. I've got quite a bit of mortar in there, but nice thing about pulling the form away while things are still wet, I can kind of point things and clean it up. Um, when I will leave the forms overnight and I come back and I've got these icicles of mortar that need to be cleaned up. So don't need to do that. Um, so let's get into a little pointing and see if we can get it a little more beautiful for our outro. So give me a moment. All right, and there we have the finished product. Uh, I've got it roughly pointed now. I'm gonna wait for things to set up a little bit and do some more cleaning. And of course, once everything uh, totally dries, I'll be able to come in with muriatic acid and water um, and, and really clean things up there. But I would say a successful um, circle. It's more or less perfect. There is some uh, anomalies to it, but I'm fairly happy with it. Remembering that I am not a professional stonemason, and, and you professionals out there who might be watching this, uh, comment. I'm curious, curious to know how I'm doing. I, I, I know I'm not doing as well as I could. I'm still a little bit unhappy with the wonky keystone there, and I may be swapping that out. So you might see in a future video, if you come back, um, that would change out. Our next video in this series actually will be the working of the door. Um, I get going to be working on the actual door and the mechanics of hanging that door, um, which is hanging a, the, the door itself is about 150 pounds in a circle. Uh, a five foot round door off hinges like that is a bit of an engineering logistical nightmare. So hoping that's going to work, but uh, if you've enjoyed this and you're curious about the whole Hobbit hole thing, um, stick around, there's gonna be more videos and we're gonna actually unpack the whole Hobbit hole thing, what, what this endeavor is all about. Um, I've been trying to narrow my focus on this video just for this, as I feel this is a standalone video about making a round circle out of stone. Hope it is helpful and informative, uh, and I hope that the little bit of skill I've acquired in the last couple of years doing some arches and circles um, conveys enough information for a DIY guy out there who's trying to attempt this himself. So that's it, enough chitter chatter. Uh, please tune in, please subscribe, please thumbs up, all that stuff, you know what you need to do. Check out our Patreon. Uh, that's it for now, see you later, back out, see ya!